Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to a very interesting case. As you can see, we have a fly in this patient's ear. It's actually stuck to the eardrum and this is the second attempt. So the patient originally presented to the clinic and so my colleague, she tried to get it out but she couldn't um, because the fly is basically cemented onto the drum, causing a slight hearing loss but also lots and lots of anxiety in this patient. Um, as you saw, I tried to get it out with suction, but the patient was quite jittery. He, would, he did not tolerate me touching the, the eardrum very well at all. Um, most of the time when you touch someone's eardrum, it's absolutely fine. They feel a, a bit of a tickle or a bump. Um, they don't usually kind of jump out of their chair, but in this case, um, the patient was very, very sensitive to that. So I've applied some lidocaine drops, which is all that gooey stuff that you saw flood into the ear. and. Uh, Lidocaine is, uh, is a local anaesthetic, so, so it'll numb the area up so that I can go in and work on it without him you know, jittering about too much. But um, at this point I thought it would be very, very easy because the glycerols kind of moistened the sort of fly carcass up a little bit and I thought it would just kind of you know, suction up into the suction probe. But it's not, even with a kind of mild scraping action, it's not coming away. So we're going to go in here, we're going to try and flush it out. So this white nozzle is going to pulse water upwards, not at the eardrum, upwards at the roof of the ear canal, and you're going to pulse the water in and create these vortices in the water. So you can see the legs of the fly just there kind of jittering back and forth. Um, and, and that's because, again, as opposed to a steady stream of water, which is not overly effective, we're, we're getting these, these kind of currents in the ear canal. So that didn't work. We're going to go in again and try and remove the body and we, we I do manage to be successful in that there you can see now it's it's gone apart from the wing I managed to leave one wing behind and the video is quite highly abridged so it's oh, it's edited obviously but um, try as I might love nor money I could not get the wing off not that I'm overly bothered about it to be honest because the patient's symptoms were resolved once the main body of the fly was off the drum uh, he felt like he could hear better and there wasn't this kind of weird kind of sense of fullness or heaviness in the ear. So the wing is not really an issue, um, but I am going to follow the patient up in a week to check that it's gone. So I've just told him to use lots and lots of drops and that, that should just kind of naturally come off and out of the ear. So sucking out the water, relatively speaking, that's a quite a normal looking ear, really. It's a little red above the handle of the malleus, but... Um, it, which is that sort of ball and stick, kind of that white ball and stick pointing at 11 o'clock. That's the first bone of the middle ear, the malleus, which kind of sticks out of the eardrum a little bit. Um, so it's a little bit red above that, but otherwise I'm, I'm not overly concerned. Another round of irrigation. You can see the eardrum actually kind of vibrating back and forth there as the irrigator's going. So I'm going to try one more time, suck out all the water. And uh, again, the, fl the, the, the wing is just kind of cemented on there. There's no way this is going to come out. And again, just drying the ear out, hoovering up the water. I'm going to try one more time. But again, you can see the eardrum just gently flexing back. So um, it, it's clearly not ready to come out, but that's fine. We've, we've solved the main issue. Um, here's the fly. Well, it's stuck in the little pipette, but I am going to put it on the slide and try one more time. There we go. So it's on the microscope slide. It's really, really tiny. It's not you know, a big, you know, a huge house fly or anything. This is almost like a, a sort of midge, really. But um, I think it's maybe like a millimetre across, really, really tiny. There it is in relation to my hand. And we're going to look at this under the microscope. So this is the fly at times 40, I think, under my compound microscope. And um, there's the wing there. So it's missing a wing. Pretty sure it's got all of its legs. Um, but... Uh, there we go, there's the wing. It's actually quite pretty actually. So you, as you can see, it's covered in lots and lots of tiny little hairs, uh, which you'll see in greater detail in a moment. But the structure of the wing is quite pretty. This part might freak some of you out, so be, be prepared. We're gonna go into dark field now. So there we go. So that's what, that's what it really looks like. So typically, and uh, just, I'll just pause it here for a moment. You can see that there, that's the eye of the fly and uh, which is kind of smushed down. But what you have to imagine is that um, the eye of, of the fly, it kind of looks like a blackberry actually. I'll just unpause it again. And it's made up of lots of little bubbles and each bubble is its own eye. So it's kind of got the like compound mosaic type eyes. 
And um, if you've ever tried to swat a fly with your hand and have failed to get it, it's primarily because flies uh, process vision a lot faster than, than humans do. So the, basically the fly is just kind of watching you in slow motion try and raise your hand ready to kill it and of course it, it can dodge you easily. But um, there we go, we're looking at it probably times a hundred at this point, magnification, and there's all the little hairs. I'm not entirely sure, I don't really, I know nothing about fly anatomy, but I'm fairly sure the hairs are there to make the, the wings more aerodynamic. But uh, quite a pretty structure. So if you're wondering why I switched from tr traditional to dark field microscopy, it's because, um, but I think both images look quite nice. But with traditional microscopy, what you've got is, is basically a flat image. There's a, a look at the eye again. What you've got is a flat image and then a very, very powerful light shining through the specimen, which can sort of distort the image a little bit. So it's, it's actually, this is now at 400, I think. So you can really see the hairs in great detail. Um, when you're looking at things under very high magnification, for example, at a, at a cellular level, it's actually very difficult to represent the image truly how it looks. So as you, as you kind of increase the magnification again and again and again, the quality of the image degrades quite a bit. So it's very difficult to get things in focus. And this is a leg here. And what we're actually, Lils, my colleague Lils was looking over my shoulder at the time, she assisted with the procedure. And what we're doing is we're looking for a foot and this is a foot right here. And what we're going to look at is, the, is the, what we call the tarsal of, of the foot. So see those hooks right there? So like spiders, flies have, have hooked feet. And um, you may think actually that the hooks are there to kind of help the fly kind of dig into surfaces and crawl up walls and stuff. But actually the hooks are there to help the, uh, the fly kind of detach its foot from surfaces. So you can't really see it here. But in between the hooks, we're going into dark field again. So that's what, you know, the color representation is true here. So it's black, the hooks are black. Um, in between the hooks are like two little sticky pads, which help the fly move along. And then when it wants to lift its foot again, it'll, it'll use the claws to detach. But um, very, very interesting case, that one. A little bit more difficult than I was expecting, but um, we got there in the end. And um, if the wing is still in there after a week, then I'll, I'll again, I'll, I'll post an update, but it'll probably be gone by then. So. I hope you found that interesting. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you guys on the next video.